look at these people. I'm just going to say that um, whenever I do thank yous, um, I'm reminded of Nancy Colello Mutiti, who does it the best. So we're going to um, keep that thought in mind and bear with us. So our first set of thank yous go to Tina Camp and Saidia Hartman. <laughs> One of my favorite aspects of this conference has been the way we've all referenced each other. Mm -hmm. um, and your names were, already became incantations throughout these days. And so we just lift them up again and say thank you so much for knowing each other, for seeing all of us and knowing um, who needed to be here. And it was such a great collaboration to you know, talk over all of the incredible um, black women that we knew should be here. And of course, this could go on for a year. So thank you both. Next, I must thank the incredible Loophole team. <laughs> Susan Thompson. Susan Thompson. <laughs> Do you want me? And Simone will, we're gonna thank the loophole team multiple times. So I will say their name, Susan Thompson, who is absolutely incredible and who each of you got to know very well um, in planning this, all of the participants. Um, Daphne Hernandez. Who worked with me at Open Society Foundations and is, comes from the music world and handles details, rights of music at such a high level and has been so integral. Emily Mello. Emily. Where is Emily? Who made sure that each and every person's name was recorded so that you could all physically be here. And also made sure that the Spellman young women were held and had what they needed to do what they did here. Rebecca Adye. who handles so many details in the span of two minutes with the grace that we all would love to have. Thank you, Rebecca, for everything. Rebecca is responsible for my sanity and my mental health. <laughs> Greta Hardenstein, who came in to work very closely with all of the performers and the tech team, as well as her husband, Wu Jae Chung, who was incredible. They're an incredible couple and made sure that the performers were held and understood and their requests were taken seriously, so thank you. Um, we have much gratitude for the Boston Institute of Contemporary Art, the sponsoring institution of both the American Pavilion and um, also supported the Loophole of Retreat Venice. Um, I need to particularly thank Jill Medivov, the director, Ava Rispini, the curator, and Kate Hearley. I thank uh, my gallery, Matthew Marks, Jacqueline Tran, and Alex Fang. I don't even know where to begin with thanking Cecilia Amani. Um, 
um, whose groundbreaking work has, uh, is one of the reasons why we're all here. I want to thank um, the Cheney Foundation, where we are. Such an extraordinary organization um, who is so invested in what we did here um, over these three days. I want to thank Renata Codello, Massimo Altieri, Gloria Pasquetto, Maria Novella, Benzoni, Irene Venezia, and Julie Pisu. I want to thank A Consulting, led by the fabulous Bianca. Masia Pavon, Sue Ellen Pavan, Beatrice Lobatelli, Malfada, Ariva, ben you have to forgive us with these pronunciations, <laughs> Ariva Bene, uh, Emily, Francesca, Augustino, Emanuele, and Lucille. Um, I think many people do not realize that the Black Box performance space is actually a swimming pool. Um, that entire space was built um, by Marciano Rizzo, techno director and his team, um, Johnny Damazi and the entire team from the input level and Enrico Mazzo for the AV, Enzo, Procopio, and uh, Alchimia team for streaming. Emanuela Colchonai and the translators who provided translation in French and in Italian. Uh, Luca Maglioni from Event 2B and all of the hosts and hostesses. The the catering team who fed us all from Santi. The cleaning crew who made it immaculate and beautiful for us. From Marcus. The shuttle boats which brought us here and back. Transport lines. The rowers for Paloma McGregor's performance. Viola Gigi and Angelica Vigasa Alvana. And we must thank the incredible Cheryl Finley and incredible students and graduates from the Simone Lee course at Spelman College. Masati Moorhead, our wonderful intern from Spelman Con College. Anastasia Warren from Simone Studio who spent this week with Annette Lane, Lane Richter. We have to thank Nunsi Kalelo Mutiti, who created the visual identity of Lupola Retreat. And we're going to also thank our supporters who funded this event, the Ford Foundation, Mellon Foundation, U2V, Bloomberg Philanthropies, Wagner Foundation, Terra Foundation, Lambent Foundation, Via Foundation, and Goldman Sachs, one million black women. And I want to thank Simone Lee.
I think so many things have been said about the triumph that is the pavilion that Simone built. Um, and the reality that the world is now and forever changed by what you have made and presented here in Venice and the platform that you've created with the loophole of retreat. Um, and what I always say to Simone and what I wanna say to this audience is that, um, you know, once, once it was announced that she would make this pavilion, I was like, of course, not shocked or surprised because it's always what I expected. Um, and it's always what I've known you would do um, to move towards your vision with purpose and clarity. Um, and we know that we can never go back to a time before what has been central for Simone is now central in the art world and the world at large. And that, Simone, you have shifted. The paradigm is what is deemed intellectual labor. The transformative and no longer invisible labor of black women throughout the global south and its diasporas that has moved the world for, forward for infinity in both directions. Um, the intellectual work of manipulating natural materials, of working with fire, of working in ceramics. And what I said um, when we were in here in April was that every time I saw someone turn the corner and see the pavilion, I saw tears, I heard gasps, and that it was not sentimentality. Um, that people were weepy upon their first encounter, but it was the experience of confronting one's own lineage and future at once. Mm -hmm. And so that... <laughs> Simone's insistence on sovereignty and authorship and self-determination has always been an insistence on collectivity. Um, and so, we are all recipients and conductors of the lineage that you make visible in everything that you do um, by always naming black women as your primary audience. And I want to also say, people have spoken about the fact that there are children here, um, which is really significant and important. And I heard Simone say, actually in a talk with Deborah Anzinger, that raising a black girl in New York was much harder than making art. Um, and, you know, I've just witnessed this be the loophole of retreat, which everyone has gotten to experience. This is Simone's life since I've met her. There have been black women from all over the world that would land in her apartment in Crown Heights. It was a residency. Um, we would have dinner parties with BC Silva. Um, <laughs> and Deneo, and, and Nancy. Um, and Peggy. And Peggy Cooper K. Fritz. <laughs> whose fearlessness is only matched by my friends here. Um, and so as you continue to ascend and bring us with you, I just know that Peggy and BC are so proud. Um, thank you, Simone. Thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, my mentors now departed, um, B.C. Silva and Peggy Cooper K. Fritz. Um, Susan, I want to thank Susan Thompson. Susan was the curator of Loophole of Retreat at the Guggenheim. And um, when she learned that I would be um, installing an exhibition in an American pavilion, she called me and she said, you need me. <laughs> and, and, and I did. Um, thank you for loop, producing the loophole of retreat, Venice, Susan. Please come take a bow. Okay. Uh, 
I also need to say that the American Pavilion is not showing the work of one artist. Uh, Conspiracy, which is one of the most important works of art I've made in my life, the film, is a collaboration with Madeline Hunt Ehrlich. Yes. Um, I've known Madeline for many, many years, and she supported my intellectual growth, and this film is a wonderful um, part of our like, ongoing collaboration. Uh, so... I need to thank Rashida Bumbre, and I had a few things to say that I think are not public knowledge. When Rashida worked at the Studio Museum as a young curator, she realized that the uh, TAP community didn't have a place to gather. Um, so um, she, with the Studio Museum, purchased a sprung floor and started a monthly gathering called Huffer's House. With Sandra. With Sandra. Mm -hmm. With Sandra. When Rashida moved to the kitchen, she brought that sprung floor with her. Um, and at the kitchen, she gave Colleen Smith, Lauren Kelly, Leslie Hewitt, and myself our first institutional solo shows. <laughs> In New York. When at um, Open Society Foundations, uh, Rashida organized a convening called Art in Public Space in which there were 50 artists from 45 countries. Two of the artists had to travel to Sudan, I mean from Sudan to Nairobi to be able to get visa to join us in Morocco. Two other artists were, were stateless without passports. Rashida moved the floor to its final resting place in Weeksville, which is what we now call Brooklyn. Weeksville was originally um, one of the first uh, African-American communities of formerly enslaved people. It started, in the, it started in the 19th century. What I'm trying to say is that Rashida will build the ground underneath your feet. She will break the ground, and she will get your visa. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you finish? Where's Zenobia? Zenobia is time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you to all our interlocutors, artists, and theorists. Um, we feel so much love. We are so happy. We're so overjoyed. We're so blessed. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Not religious. Um, but, um, uh, thank you so much for joining us and um, sharing so much with us. Um, the cross-pollination was really overwhelming, and I'm sure we'll be thinking about it for a very long time. Thank you so much. And I Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I just want to thank my family for 
Um, being a part of Loophole of Retreat, my friend Adrian told me that as Zahara was walking up to the boat, she was saying, it's happening, it's happening. She works so hard. And so I just am so happy to have my daughter here as a witness. Thank you for loving her, everyone, and all the children that are here. Ivy and Georgia May and Idan, Neva. Um, Ivy. Ivy, Georgia May, Idan, Neva, all the beautiful children that are here. We love you. Um, and I want to also thank my partner, Rashid Shabazz, who not only is a black feminist, <laughs> but also will do what, anything you need. Um, and I'm just so thankful, Rashid, for you and your support of my work in my life always. My mother, who is, you know, my origin story, the black radical feminist who raised four artists together with my father, who joined the ancestors last year, but I know he is here. My mother um, began her career in legal aid um, defending the rights of children. Um, and, you know, that seriousness she brought to her parenting. She wrote lullabies for each of us, individual lullabies for each of us. Um, and I'm just so grateful. And thank you to my sister, Cecily, for being amazing and singing. And her husband, seat up. Thank you, Zenobia, for being my reason for being. <laughs> and for all your support um, for so many years when we went through so much struggle. Um, I just wanted to sing one last song. It's called <laughs> Goodbye, Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, sing hallelujah. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, sing hallelujah. Have to go and you can't come with me. Goodbye, sing hallelujah. Have to go, I'm sorry you can't come. Goodbye, sing hallelujah.